In this video we are going to take a look at the most popular and probably the most expensive fridge that you can get for your camper van. This is a short video all about the Dometic CRX50 fridge, also known as the Waco CRX50 fridge. They're both exactly the same and these are the kind of fridges you will find in a camper van or a small boat. Now, the purpose of this video is twofold. First of all, I'm going to tell you or show you how to repair one of these fridges if it goes wrong. When we got um, our camper van, it had this fridge in it, which was brand new and it didn't work. So we've just had it repaired and I'm gonna share with you my experience of that repair. And the other thing I want to do is show you how well these fridges perform with the EcoFlow Delta battery pack. Now, once again, when we got our camper van, it had one of these fridges in and three big leisure batteries, which we've taken out and we've replaced it all by the EcoFlow Delta. The advantage of the EcoFlow Delta is it's a lithium iron battery pack. You can take it out of the van when you're not using it. You can plug your solar panels straight into it. And obviously on the back here, you have several power sockets. Now you could power your van fridge from one of these power sockets, just plug in the converter straight into there. But we're not going to do that because the minute you use these power sockets on the EcoFlow Delta, you have the cooling fans kicking in and they're quite noisy. But thankfully the EcoFlow Delta comes with a 12 volt cigarette port. So that is what we're gonna be using to run both the fridge and the sink. So just very quickly, a bit of background on the fridges here, the CRX50, we placed the CR50 fridge and the main differences between the two of them were the newer fridge has this digital readout here. There's not a knob inside the fridge. Um, it's slightly more tapered. It's more efficient. It runs more quietly and perhaps most importantly, it has this wonderful removable fridge or freezer door there so that you can turn the whole unit into a freezer. This will freeze down to about 20 degrees when you take that out and put it on the fast freeze setting or you can have the whole thing as a fridge. Now as I mentioned this fridge here came with our camper van when we bought it but it never worked so the first thing I did was set about trying to fix the fridge which unfortunately I was never able to do um, the first thing I did was buy a new control unit or what I thought was a control unit for the fridge. And these control units sit on the back here. Now, if you get them from Dometic, they're about 250 pounds. And I managed to source one from a manufacturer which looked exactly the same apart from the cooling fins for about 90 pounds, thinking I was very clever. But it transpires that this particular model here was for the CR50 and not for the CRX50. And it doesn't work on the later fridges. So if anyone needs one of these control units, I shall list that on eBay. The next thing I did was to go onto eBay and buy a non-working fridge. Um, for I think I paid about £180. Now just to put it in perspective, these fridges new are anywhere between £600 to £900, depending where you get them. So they're not cheap, these fridges. Anyway, this fridge here I paid £180 for. And the problem with this fridge was it only worked if you bridged the thermostat at the back. So all of these lights here would light up but it only worked if you bridge the thermostat. So the person who was selling this fridge went along and bought himself a thermostat or a temperature probe here, which I never bothered fitting because in fact, that was not the problem with this fridge anyway. It transpires that the problem with this fridge and this fridge, this fridge had two problems. One, this control unit didn't work and two, the control unit inside here didn't work either. So this fridge, when I bought it off eBay, only had one problem, namely that this control unit here did not work. And the person who sold it thought it was the probe, but no, it's the control unit. And you can get that control unit. They look like this here. And the part number is 445026433. But to change that control unit, you have to take off this panel here and it's glued on. So in order to do that, you need to heat this up with a hairdryer and very carefully pry this off. And it's quite possible to break this piece when you're doing it, although you can get replacements from Dometic. So this part here, we paid 72 pounds for, 
and the replacing that part cost us 90 pounds in labor so and that's from Andy down in um, Cheddar, the, what I call him Andy, the Dometic Fridge Repairman. So if your fridge isn't working, and this is the problem here, it'll cost you £72 for the part, £90 for the labour. You can get this part slightly cheaper. If you put that part number there into Google, you'll find a couple of places in Germany and one in France sell this part here for about £60 or sorry, €60. Euros. You, so you could get this cheaper and you could attempt that repair yourself, which I will do with this fridge here. And then I'll sell this fridge on to someone who needs one. The cheapest place that I've found that internal PCB board is La Boutique de la Route in France, 59 euros. Now I noticed that these guys also sell the self-adhesive pad that you need um, that sticks on top if you don't want to reuse the old one. Plus here, they also have a video by Dometic of exactly how to do the job, what tools you'll need, etc. This is the flexible self-adhesive panel that you're going to have to take off, 23 euros. If your control unit has gone here, um, that's dead easy to swap out. It's just a few screws to take it off. Um, and just remember to put the plugs in the same place as you took them off. So as I say, you can get that part. Andy, the Dometic Fridge Repairman, sell, said, tells me that they're about £240 from Dometic. And as I say, I don't imagine there'd be any labour associated with um, replacing that because it really is just a plug and play. So if you are planning on replacing the control unit, make sure you get the right one. Um, Andy, the Dometic Fridge Repairman, actually has a working one of these, so he would be able to tell you whether that was actually the source of your problem or not. Last but not least, if your compressor has gone, then you might as well get yourself a new fridge because the compressor is actually built into the whole fridge. Um, it's not possible just to get this part here. You'd have to effectively get a new fridge. Once again, I will be selling this fridge. So if your compressor has gone, but your control board and inside and outside work, this fridge would be a perfect um, replacement for that. Before we move on to the last part of the video, which is going to be to see how well this fridge actually works with the EcoFlow Delta, i.e. how long you can power this fridge for from an EcoFlow Delta using the 12 volt cigarette socket. And also I want to do another test to see how long you can power it for using the 240 volt sockets on the EcoFlow Delta. But just before we move on to that, a word of advice, if you do go onto eBay and plan to buy a second hand fridge on the basis that these are super duper expensive, just bear in mind that if you don't know what's wrong with the fridge, you could end up paying something like 240 pounds for a new control unit, 72 pounds for a control unit here, um, and then labor and on top of that, if you're gonna get somebody else to do it, obviously if you attempt to do this yourself, you may end up breaking that panel and have to replace that as well. So just be careful if you're gonna buy one of these second hand and it's listed as parts not well used to join our wires together are these little Waco clips here. And these are excellent. If you've never seen them before, it's a way of joining two wires together without any soldering. So this is a three way here. Um, so you can, this is the main positive in here and we'll be able to take two positives out of there. And the way to do it is you just move that lever up, push the wire in, clamp the lever down and that's job done. There we go. So we've just turned the fridge on here. This is the temperature control here. You've got one, two, three, four, five. The bottom one there is the uh, freezer light. So just by pressing this button here, will cool the fridge down. So if you wanted to turn this whole thing into a freezer, you would just hold that button in, you'd see the bottom one there is lit. We don't want to do that. For the purposes of this test, we're just gonna have the fourth uh, light down, and I think that puts the fridge at three degrees. You can see here on the EcoFlow Delta, the battery is at 100% or 99%. And if the compressor was running constantly, you'd have about 39, 35 hours, something like that. It's drawing anywhere between 30 and 40 watts. Obviously, when the fridge gets to temperature, that'll drop down to nothing. A couple of hours for this fridge to get to temperature. The compressor's now turned off. You can see there's no 
um, energy usage uh, took about 10% of the battery to get there. First test was with nothing in the fridge. Next up, I'm going to see how long it takes to freeze these ice cubes and also chill down a couple of bottles of fine sparkling rosé, which we just bought back from France. The thing about this fridge is you can actually fit in larger bottles in the door. So now that we've had the fridge door open, the compressor is going to kick in again and it'll be taking some energy. It'll be interesting to see how long it takes for that compressor to actually cut off this time. It's the next morning and you can see that to get this fridge to temperature and keep it like that, about 75% of this battery has been used. So let's have an open up of this fridge and have a quick look inside. See. Joined by my beautiful assistant. If the wine is cold on this, yep. what about the ice? You have ice. Perfect. Now, realistically, what you'd be doing during the day is obviously drinking the super chilled Prosecco, getting the milk out and closing the fridge again. So we're going to do that several times today just to see how long this battery lasts. And you can see that the... Um, Compressor kicks in every time you open the fridge and it'll take a little bit of time just to get that down to temperature. It takes about 20 minutes after you've opened the fridge door for that compressor to click off again. I'm going to do another test because inside this fridge here, you will notice there are one, two, three, four lights and each of these represent a three degree step. So I've set this fridge to be on the coldest setting of three degrees, which actually you don't really need a fridge at three degrees. What I'm going to do is uh, turn the fridge off and then I'm gonna let everything warm up to room temperature again and I'm gonna see how long it takes to chill down the bottles of um, sparkling rosé and make ice with that set, not at the coldest setting, but one up from the coldest setting, because I suspect it will take an awful lot less power. We plugged our EcoFlow Delta in for an hour and a half. It was at 17% when we plugged it in. It's back at 100%. So we're going to redo this test now. And instead of cooling this fridge down to three degrees, we're going to put it on the second light up, which will mean the fridge is at six degrees. So we're repeating this test with two warm bottles of sparkling rosé, tray of ice cubes, on the second light here. So that will cool the fridge down to six degrees as opposed to the first light here, which cools it down to three degrees. And we're gonna see how much of the battery it takes to do In case that. you're in the slightest bit interested, this is our beer or wine fridge here, and it only goes down to a minimum of five degrees, and beers and wine at five degrees are super chilled. So six degrees should easily be enough to chill down beer and wine, and of course, if you do use your fridge for food, for meat and fish as well. This test is running. I just want to remind you the massive advantage of using something like the EcoFlow Delta in your camper van as opposed to leisure batteries is that you can take this out so for example you're not going to be taking your fridge out the van uh, every day but you could cool the fridge down the night before using the EcoFlow Delta and then take it into your house the next morning it takes about an hour and a half to completely charge up so when you set off everything in your fridge is actually cool and you've got a full battery plus you can run this battery down and leave it run down and it won't have any adverse effect on the EcoFlow Delta if you've seen my other videos I did on leisure batteries and how to ruin batteries, if you leave your leisure battery at anything other than fully charged when you park your van up for a week or two, or for the winter, you will completely ruin those leisure batteries. So four hours later, the EcoFlow Delta has, is down just 9% and the compressor is no longer Which implies that this fridge is now at 6%. Now, I can't quite believe that can be the case, but let's just open it up and actually see. Definitely these are cold, nowhere near as cold as they were when we had it at 3%, but what is the situation on the ice cubes, I wonder? Well, well, definitely has made ice cubes. That is quite incredible. If you've got one of these CRX50 fridges, just to recap, to get that fridge down to three degrees took 75% of our EcoFlow Delta battery. To get it and took, <laughs> took several hours, like eight hours or something like that. To get it down to 6%, 
just took 9% of the battery and four hours. So running this fridge at 6%, use six degrees, so it uses considerably less energy than keeping it at three degrees. If you do have a Dometic or Waco fridge that needs repairing, we use this guy here, Blue Sky Caravans, on that number there, his name's Andy, and he was really helpful based down in Cheddar in Somerset, right next to a campsite as it happens, so you can go camping there while he looks at your fridge.